Hello everyone, in this problem we are given a string s and a list of words dictionary. Our goal is to use the words in the dictionary to form s, such that the amount of characters that are not formed by the words in the dictionary is minimized. We will return the amount of characters in s that cannot be formed by the words in the dictionary. So for this example here, s is apple orange, and dictionary is apple, orange, and pear. The optimal answer would be using apple and orange to form S, and since there are no leftover characters, we would return zero. But in the second example, we can use apple, orange, and pear, but there are three leftover characters that aren't used, so we would return three. And in this third example, you can see how if we introduce another word to the dictionary, orange b pear, it would be a more optimal way to use orange b pair to minimize the unpaired characters in s. For this more optimal solution, there are still two unused characters though, so we would return two as our answer. Now for some constraints of the problem. The first is that the words in the dictionary can be used more than once. The second is that the words given in the dictionary list are unique. And finally, S and the words in the dictionary will only be composed of lowercase English characters. Okay, now that you hopefully understand the problem, let's take a look at the first solution. We should notice that this problem can be solved with similar subproblems. We can take the original word S and cut it into two substrings. Let's call them S1 and S2. So in this example, S1 is A, B, C, D, E. S2, F, G, H, I, J, K. We will try and match S1 to one of the words in the dictionary. If there is a match, then we don't have to consider the length in the final answer because it is matched, so then our candidate answer will just be the subproblem of S2. If there is not a word that matches, then we know that for this arrangement, S1 will be unmatched for this solution. So we take its length and add the subproblem of S2. If we do this for every way we can split the string, then we will come up with the best answer for S. You can see how this solution is recursive in nature. In this solution, you pass in S2 into the same solve function, and when that subproblem is being solved, S2 is treated as S. That is a rough idea of the solution. Let's look into the code for more details. We can start at the bottom with the solution one function, this is the main function that will be called. First, we convert the dictionary list to a set, so it's faster to check if a word is in the dictionary. And then we call our helper function, passing in s and the dictionary set. In our helper function, we start with our base case. This is if s is empty. If s is empty, then the optimal answer is zero because there is no need to do anything to form s. Next, we initialize the minimum extra variable this is the final answer for s that we will return. It is going to be the result of taking a bunch of candidate minimums from the various places we cut s into s1 and s2. Now let's go back to the for loop. We iterate from 1 to length of s plus 1 with a variable called cut index. Recall from earlier how we split the string into two places. The index at which we split the string is the cut index in the code. S1 is the substring of S from the beginning of S to the cut index exclusive, and S2 is the substring from the cut index inclusive to the end of S. Current extra is the candidate minimum that we will compare to the global minimum answer. As we mentioned earlier, there are two cases for computing the answer for the current way we are cutting the string. If S1 is in the dictionary, then S1's length doesn't count towards the answer, because the substring can be composed by a word in the dictionary. So the minimum is just what the minimum of the S2 recursive call gives back. The other case is when S1 is not in the dictionary, which implies that all of S1 will be left over extra characters, at least for the way S1 is divided now. Once we compute the current extra, we see if it is a better answer than the existing global solution. And as mentioned earlier, we return minimum extra. That's it for the code. Let's now look at the time and space complexity of this solution. Let's let s be the length of s, d is the amount of words in the dictionary, 
and a is the length of the longest word in the dictionary. The time complexity of the solution is somewhat complicated, so I'll analyze it in steps. First, we have the complexity of creating the dictionary set. It is a times d. The a comes from having to compute the hash function of a word in the dictionary. And worst case, this is going to be the length of the longest word in the dictionary because the hash function is going to need to iterate through every letter in the word. The d comes from having to compute the hash for every word in the dictionary. Next, we are trying to compute the overall complexity of the work that the helper function is doing. This is going to be the number of total recursive calls we make to the helper, plus the time it takes to compute each call. For the number of recursive calls, it is 2 raised to the s. This can be explained in more detail, but it's a long explanation, so I'll post it in the Knapsack website linked in the description, as opposed to in this video. The main takeaway is just that the order is exponential for the number of recursive calls, and we can see it's exponential because each recursive call can spawn s more branches, and the max depth of recursion is also s. The time to compute each call is s raised to the second power, one s for the for loop, and the other s for computing the s1 hash when looking up if it's present in the dictionary. So the final time complexity can be summarized as a times d for the set conversion, plus two raised to the s recursive calls, times s squared for processing each recursive call. Again, the details aren't super important. The main takeaway is that it is exponential, and we can improve this in a moment. For space, we have ad for creating the dictionary set. It has d words, where each word will have potentially a letters, plus we have o of s for the max depth of recursion. So that's it for the first solution. The time complexity was exponential. A natural way to improve recursive solutions is to introduce the memoization caching technique. It is fairly straightforward to do here. Our memo is going to be a map where the key is a S2 substring that we have already computed the answer to, and the value is the optimal answer for that S2 string. In our helper function, we add a check to see if we have answered this string before. And if we have, we can skip the recursion and return our cached answer in constant time. If not, then we go through the recursion and save our answer in the memo for future recursive calls. This will help the time complexity with recurring subproblems that occur because it lets us skip the recursion for any repeated S2 subproblem. Let me show an example of how we can run into repeated subproblems. Let's say that our original string is this, A, B, C, D, E. On the first iteration, we would split our string like this and recurse on B, C, D, E. On the second iteration, we would split after the A, B. Now if we take the two S2 strings from the first and second recursive calls, we make recursive calls on B, C, D, E and C, D, E. When we enumerate the first two ways these strings are split, you can see the S2 for the second iteration solve of B, C, D matches the first iteration of solve of C, D, E. And this will lead to the same recursive call. By caching the duplicate recursive calls, we improve our time complexity to AD plus S cubed. The AD comes from creating the dictionary set, just as in the last solution. The S cubed comes from our recursion. Every time we exit early and use a cached memo value, that is just constant time, so we can ignore that. We should think about the computations that we can't use the memo for, which go into the for loop. This can happen s times, one for each possible s2. It takes s squared time every time we enter the for loop, so in total, that is s times s squared, which is s cubed. Space is ad for the dictionary set, just as the previous solution, plus s squared, because the memo can have s elements, each with sizes from 1 to s. Finally, our third solution follows the common pattern of converting the recursive solution with memoization to a bottom-up dynamic programming approach. For this solution, we will set up a DP array where the answer to DP of i is the amount of characters in the substring starting from s of i to the end of s that cannot be formed by the words in the dictionary. In other words, it is the answer to the overall question, but just for the substring from i to the end of the string. 
These substrings are essentially the S2 values from the previous solutions, and in this solution, we will work backwards to compute them. So here's the code. The DP array has length of S plus one elements, and they have infinity for starter values. The last element is set to zero because that is the base case of the empty substring. And ultimately, we are going to return DP of the zero index, which represents the answer to the entire string. Now to the for loop. We iterate backwards, right to left, with the start index variable. Start index represents the beginning of the substring we are trying to solve the subproblem for. Next, similar to the recursive problems, we try and divide the subproblem into S1 and S2 by cutting the subproblem at every possible cut index. S1 is the substring from the start index to the cut index, and the rest is the same as our recursive solution. We have a current extra, which is our minimal solution for this cut index. If the S1 is in the dictionary set, then the answer is just the subproblem for S2. But this time, rather than making a recursive call, we can get our answer in the DP array at the cut index position. And if S1 is not in the dictionary, then we have to add the length of S1. And last, we see if this cut index's answer is better than the existing best answer. Once we compute the DP values of the smaller substrings, working back to the whole string, we return the DP value of the zeroth index, which is the answer to the whole S string. Lastly, let's look at the time and space complexity of this solution. For time, we have AD plus S cubed. The AD comes from converting the dictionary list to the dictionary set, just like the other solutions. For the S cubed part, the first and second S come from the outer and inner for loops, and the third comes from when we compute the hash for S1 when looking up whether or not it is in the dictionary. For space, it is AD for the dictionary set, plus S for the DP array. Okay, that is it for this problem. We went over three solutions, a recursive solution, which we then improved with memoization, and then we converted the recursive solution to a bottom-up approach with dynamic programming. As always, thank you for watching, and good luck on all your interviews.